our dopamine receptor sites become less sensitive. It may look like you've been, you know, everything in your life looks fine, but you're just not as joyful as you used to be. One of the changes you're gonna see here is that this 48 hour fast starts to resensitize these dopamine receptor sites. Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, we are gonna talk about the 48 hour fast. Fasting is one of the greatest ways to take back control of your health, and the 48 hour fast is amazing because there's so much mental health that comes with fasting that long. Here's what's really cool. When you break down fasting, you look at 15 hours is really helping us become metabolically flexible. 17 hours is helping our cells start to detox. 24 hours, we start resetting our gut. 36 hours, we start uh, making our body more efficient at burning fat. And at 48 hours, we, we amp up our brain power. So I have studies that I wanna share with you guys. They all come at looking at the 48 hour fast in unique ways. But before I launch into those studies, I want you to realize that there are two major things that happen to us as we age. One is that our dopamine receptor sites become less sensitive. So just because you make dopamine doesn't mean that you're gonna use that dopamine and you're gonna experience dopamine in the same way. So how this looks for you is it may look like you've been, you know, everything in your life looks fine, but you're just not as joyful as you used to be. Or things that used to excite you don't excite you as much anymore. And that could be because these dopamine receptor sites are not as sensitive a little bit like insulin receptor sites that don't become as sensitive, dopamine receptor sites can get blunted and it can not take in the dopamine molecules as easily. So one of the changes you're gonna see here is that this 48 hour fast starts to resensitize these dopamine receptor sites. The second thing that you'll see in some of the studies I'm gonna share with you is that when we have been under a tremendous amount of stress for a long period of time, and the longer we live on this planet, the more stress we're gonna have, what ends up happening is that we start getting locked into our amygdala. Our amygdala is the midbrain, it is the fight or flight brain. So as you age, as stress goes up, as you have more trauma, you need tools to start to help to get more blood flow, more activity to the prefrontal cortex. Because the prefrontal cortex, when you're operating from this part of your brain, it quiets the anxiety fight or flight brain. And you're gonna see that the 48 hour fast can start to help us with more uh, cognition in the prefrontal cortex. So that's really cool, right? So these are the two principles I'm operating off as I go down these studies. Okay, first one, and this was specifically done on a 48 hour fast on amateur weightlifters. And what they did is they found that after 48 hours, no, it was water, no calories. So there was nothing, it was just water for 48 hours. And they found that they had higher parasympathetic activity, which, if you're familiar with the nervous system, your sympathetic nervous system is what is that fight or flight, like go, go, go nervous system, and the parasympathetic is the rest and digest. So a 48 hour fast in these amateur weightlifters improved parasympathetic activity, so they chilled out, okay? It also decreased resting, and this is, part, this is important, resting frontal brain activities. So Think about it for a second. How many times have you been sitting around and think, I shouldn't be anxious, I should be doing something, why can't I just sit here, and you feel wound up? That's because at rest, your prefrontal cortex is constantly going. We need our prefrontal cortex to be able to solve problems, which is great, and to be able to, to, to put, see a goal and go after a goal. But when we're resting, we don't want it active. And so what they found in these weightlifters is the, at 48 hours, they started to see the prefrontal cortex, um, resting prefrontal cortex activity come down. Okay, and then the third thing that I think is really interesting is they saw parts of the prefrontal cortex in these amateur weightlifters that became the cognitive functions improved and specifically, this is so cool, specifically in mental flexibility. So what does that mean? 
That means that they were able to go from task to task to task much easier and switch in and out of different learning styles. So those of you that are studying, those of you that have jobs that require a lot of multitasking, this is where the 48 hour fast is gonna help to condition your brain. Okay, second study, this study showed that as ketones went up, there was another uh, chemical, neurochemical that went up, which is called BDNF. So the more ketones you get, the more BDNF you get. And what they found is that BDNF alerts the neurons in the hippocampus and says, hey, we're gonna make a metabolic shift here. We're going from glucose to ketones, and in that, we need you to start repairing. And so that's exactly what the brain does. The hippocampus is the part of the brain that's mood and memory. So this one was done on, they went over 24 hours. They didn't say how long, but they said it was an over 24 hour fast. So I'm putting it in the 48 hour fast category. And they said that when the BDNF came on the scene because ketones came on the scene, that these neurons in the mood and memory part of our brains started to regenerate. They started to create new neurons and the brain was more able to learn. The brain was more alert because of that metabolic switch. How cool is that? Okay, and then the last one, this was also a 24 hour plus one. So again, they didn't, they didn't say hardcore 24 or hardcore uh, 48. So I'm gonna put it in the 48 because I want your brain to be working at its best. So they found that they past 24 hours, they started to see an increase in dopamine release in the brain. So you got more dopamine coming out if we go back to that first study, you've got more receptor sites. If we go to the third study, you've got more of these neural pathways carrying dopamine. And now we're seeing you're gonna get, like I said, more release. The other thing, and the last thing I'm gonna tell you if you're not completely convinced, is that what they found is that these neurons, these new neurons, were more excitable. So the, the effect that a 48 hour fast can have on dopamine, on BDNF, on the hippocampus for mood and memory, on the prefrontal cortex, the study after study after study is showing that the longer you fast, the more the benefits turn to the brain. So super cool, I'll leave all the links for these studies in the notes for those of you that wanna dive into them and look at them. Okay, check this out. I have a free fasting guide for you all, it's free and it's gonna teach you all the basics of fasting. It's gonna teach you how to kill hunger when you fast, which is really cool, and it's gonna show you how to break your fast, among many other things. All you gotta do is click on the link below and enjoy. What do you break your fast with? But we're specifically gonna talk about how do you break your fast to maximize dopamine and GABA in your brain to bring you more joy. And I want you to realize that your happy hormones are primarily made in your gut. Now stop and think about this for a moment. What have we done to our gut microbiome? We were raised in a healthcare system that has told us that bacteria and viruses are bad and that we need to kill every single, single bad bacteria and bad virus that comes in our path. And in this focus, we have killed the good ones too. And the problem with this is it's the good bacteria that make dopamine and they make GABA. So if you are anxious, if you are depressed, there is a large chance that you just don't have enough of these bacteria and you may be closer to joy and calmness and happiness than you might, might even realize. So, Let's use the art of fasting to be able to grow you some great bacteria that will make you more dopamine and make you more GABA. Now remember, go back and listen to the videos that I talk about how fasting repairs this inner mucosal lining of the gut and it changes the terrain of the gut so that good bacteria can grow. So when you go to break your fast, as happy as you will be to break your fast, I wanna encourage you to not just jump into your favorite meal. If you wanna maximize joy, if you wanna grow these good bacteria, you're gonna to need to follow the rules of what I call the three Ps. This is probiotic, prebiotic, and polyphenol foods. 
I want you anytime you need to improve the microbiome post fast, I want you to think about the three P's. So a classic example of a uh, meal that I break my fast with is sauerkraut. I try to put sauerkraut on anything. So I usually mix it with some avocado. Sauerkraut is adding good bacteria in. I also will put some chia seeds and hemp seeds in there because those have a prebiotic uh, component to them that will feed this, this bacteria. Uh, I'm, I, I have a great farmer's market near us and there's a vendor there called Wise Goat and I will often use their gut tonics to break my fast with. You can use kombucha to break your fast with. I've used beet kvass to break my fast, but I, I've used kefir to break my fast. Raw sheep's yogurt is another one that I'll use to break my fast. Coco yo, I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on. But I'm strategic, especially in these longer fasts, I'm very strategic about replenishing my good bacteria so I can have more dopamine, so I can have more GABA so that my immune system can be stronger. So we love fasting, but I want to encourage you to really look at how you break your fast as important as the length of your fast. Okay, if you love this video, you're gonna wanna check out the next video of my food series. I, on this video, wanna talk about the healthy foods that you might be eating that will stop you from a long and healthy life.